Hello, Wonder Hussy here, standing at the side of Interstate 15 at the Cajon Pass. Okay, this is the main route to get from the desert to the LA basin and the coast, and thousands of cars and trucks pass through here every day. And I've driven through the Cajon Pass many, many times, but I usually just blow through because I'm either headed to LA or I'm headed back to Vegas, and there's really no reason to stop here. Certainly not to get gas because the prices are ridiculous. But I got to thinking, there's so many trails, rails, and roads that pass through this area that there's bound to be some interesting stuff up here. I mean, it's basically like the crossroads of the Southwest, if you think about it. So I decided to take some time and see for myself what kind of interesting stuff I can find up here at the Cajon Pass. Okay, this is an area called Mormon Rocks. Just sort of an outcropping of these giant weird I don't know if it's sandstone, kind of weird formations up here. And they call them Mormon rocks because back in the pioneer days, when the settlers were trying to get to California, you know, get that gold, and the Mormons were trying to escape uh, persecution back east, well, the old Spanish trail and the old pioneer trails came right through here at the Cajon Pass. Okay, it's basically the most gradual route through these mountains separating the desert from the California coast. So it's just kind of the most natural place to pass through. Uh, matter of fact, the Native Americans who lived here way before there were any Mormons or white settlers coming this way, they also used this pass to get from the desert to the coast because they used to trade. You know, I don't know what they traded from the desert. I guess minerals, rocks, arrowheads, maybe obsidian. They would bring that to the coast and trade it for, you know, clamshells, oyster shells, stuff that the uh, Indians at the coast had. So this was already a trail way before the arrival of the white man. But when the white man started making his way across the country, well, he followed in the footprints of the Indians. And I've already done a bunch of videos talking about the old Spanish trail. That was the first white person trail from, well, it started in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it went all the way to Los Angeles where the Spaniards also had a, um, a colony. So that was the way the Spaniards were able to bring Oh gosh, I think they brought like woven blankets and textiles from Santa Fe to Los Angeles where they traded them for horses and then they brought the horses back to Santa Fe. So this was well used by people on the old Spanish trail and then the Mormons came shortly after that and so there were lots of people coming through this area with lots of blankets and lots of horses and so because of that, <laughs> Well, this area also became sort of a hotbed for thieves. You know, no good nicks, banditos, desperados. You know, there's all kinds of nooks and crannies and caves and ravines to hide out in up here. And so there were some pretty bad hombres who spent time up here at the Cajon Pass. Uh, I've mentioned in past videos a guy named Chief Wakara. It's W-A-L-K-A-R-A. -A -A. Well, he was a notorious horse thief. I don't remember what tribe he was from, but... Well, he was probably justifiably pissed at all these white people coming through his land. And so his way of exacting revenge was him and his gang would steal hundreds of horses. I think even maybe thousands of horses would be rounded up here. And gosh, I don't know what they did. Uh, sold or traded them to other Native American tribes. But it wasn't just horses. He also did a brisk business in slaves. Now, I don't know if Chief Wakara himself traded slaves. I think he did. But slave trading was certainly a thing among Native American cultures, in this part of the country at least. I know people like to think of the noble Native American as living peacefully on the land and using every part of the buffalo. And they did do that. But, well, there were also some uglier sides to the Native Americans, and slave trading was one of them. You know, they would kidnap, I think, mostly women and children from an opposing tribe, and then they would sell them to another tribe as slaves. And, well, between the women, children, and horses, there was a lot of stolen goods and illicit trading going on up here. I'm frankly surprised that these rocks aren't covered in climbers. This just looks like the perfect kind of rock that you would want to climb up. I mean, I'm not a climber. Don't ask me. Maybe it's the wrong kind of rock, but you don't really see any, like, any people recreating up here so much. In fact, this whole area has kind of a sketchy vibe. Uh, 
there's a parking area over there where you can kind of look at the rocks, but and it's always full of like kind of busted down, creepy looking vans and cars and looks like people are living in them or partly living in them. And I don't know, man, you know me, I'm not easily spooked, but I get a very creepy vibe from this area. And you know, maybe that just goes all the way back to the days of the <laughs> slave traders and the horse thieves. Anyway, I may not be a climber, but I still want to climb up a little bit. You know, it's a beautiful day here today. I need to get some exercise. Let's see what's at the top of this ridge. Let's see. Oh, wow, look, more rocks. How about that? Yeah, you see what I mean about all these holes and caves and mysterious little places to hide out in these rocks? This is totally the best place to be a desperado. But I guess it was also a pretty good place to be crossing through as a Mormon pioneer. I mean, if you think about it, by the time you got here, say you left Where'd the Mormons come out of? Nauvoo. Say you left Missouri, in any case, that's where all the pioneers headed out from Independence, Missouri. You left Missouri, you crossed the whole plains, you crossed this, you crossed that. Then you crossed that miserable godforsaken desert. And in some cases, people actually crossed through Death Valley. Matter of fact, I think the Death Valley 49ers, and I made a whole video about them, they came through this pass, you know, on their way from Death Valley, which is kind of that way. They came through here, and that's when they finally saw the Los Angeles Basin and the coast in the distance, and they knew they were home free. But even this landscape would have been relatively, you know, green and refreshing to them after crossing that miserable, brutal baking desert. So anyway, I guess so many Mormons passed through this area that these mysterious rock formations kind of acquired the nickname Mormon Rocks. And actually, some people say that the Cajon Pass itself is named after a Mormon. Okay, I guess there's some dispute over what the word Cajon actually means. It's C-A-J-O-N, Cajon, not Cajun, Cajon. And in Spanish, I think Cajon means like a little box, kind of like a shoe box. And this is, I guess, a box canyon. So I feel like the accepted Wisdom is that this was just named Cajon Pass because it's like a box canyon. But then I also read that there's this, there was this Mormon pioneer named Cahoon, C-A-H-O-O-N, Cahoon. And that's what it was really named after. They just kind of like Spanishized it, I guess, to sound cool. What do I know? You know, another guy who used to hang out here and probably hide out in some of these caves was this guy Cuejo or Quijo. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's Q. U-E-H-O-E, Quejo, Quejo, Quejo. Uh, he was a half-breed, half-white, half, I think, Paiute Indian. And consequently, because he was a half-breed, just like the Cher song, he was cast out of both communities. He was never accepted by the white folk, never accepted by the Native American folk. And to make matters worse, he had a club foot, so he was really cast out. Well, because of all that, I guess it made him, it kind of hardened his heart towards his fellow humans, and he became one of the most notorious horse thieves of all. He operated all the way from here to the to Black Canyon, below the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River. Matter of fact, that's where they finally found his bones after he died. I plan to make an entire video on Quejo, Quejo, however you want to say it, but right now I guess I better wrap up the Mormon rocks and head on to the next interesting site up here at Cajon Pass. Okay, once the automobile was invented and people didn't have to travel on foot anymore, well, they started to build roads. And way before Interstate 15 was even a glimmer in the devil's eye, there was a road, a mother road, if you will, that passed right through the Cajon Pass. That's right, Route 66 came right through these mountains. And it makes perfect sense because, well, if you think of the lyrics to the song, King Man Barstow San Bernardino. Well, Barstow is just right over that side of the mountains and San Bernardino is on that side of the mountains. So yeah, Route 66 passed right through here. And matter of fact, uh, in the very early days of automobile travel, there was this place here called Camp Cajon. Okay, when I first saw this monument with a flag on it, I thought, oh, it must have been like an army camp, like a fort or something. Like maybe there was some fort up here. No. Camp Cajon was a free campground built by the Auto Club of Southern California. Okay, how about that? I was reading all about it on this signboard here, and it's actually really interesting. 
Okay, basically this guy here, William Bristol, founded Camp Cajon as a place for weary automobile travelers to rest and take a break after their brutal crossing of the desert. Okay, if you think about traveling across the desert in one of those old-timey Model T Fords with like wooden wheels, I don't even think they really had tires at first. I mean, you could, I guess there were dirt roads before they even built Route 66. And so people were inexplicably crossing the Mojave Desert in these old-timey automobiles and it would have been bumpy and it would have been hot because okay yeah there's no wheels there's no suspension well there's also no air conditioning so golly hot dusty bumpy i don't think most of those early cars even had a roof so yeah dusty too you would have definitely needed a break by the time you made it here so i thought this was pretty interesting he established this whole free campground all kinds of parking spots cook stoves for you to cook your dinner uh, it looks like there was a garage for automotive repairs a little cafe and store another cafe and store with a gas station i mean this must have been quite the spot back in the day i mean it still is quite the spot i mean this is an excellent overview of interstate 15 where you can see for yourself the insane amount of vehicle and truck traffic that comes over this pass every single day i'm not kidding it's like this 24 7 365 and it's even worse if you try uh coming over cohen pass on a friday or a sunday because then all the people that are either headed to or from vegas are on the road and friday night i guess it's kind of fun everybody's driving to vegas woohoo but sunday afternoon ooh it's nasty people are hung over they're grumpy they lost all their money there's probably a lot of road rage incidents but you know back in the good old days of camp cajon it looks like it was actually a pretty nice place to hang out my how times have changed okay there's one other kind of monument i wanted to check out over here and it's interesting they really do have a little parking lot set up here uh and it, there is sort of like a little spot to stop and learn about the history which i didn't think anyone else was as weird as i was and would actually want to stop at cajon pass and poke around but apparently i'm not alone you can see up top there there's a sign for the old spanish trail which i already talked about passed over here and the mormon road which i also talked about the past over here and then something called the john brown toll road which i'm guessing was some kind of road that some dude graded back in 1861 sign says it went from 1861 to 1881 well you know this was an indian footpath and the old spanish trail you know they drug horses over but it wasn't broad enough for wagons so some enterprising dude named john brown he must have sort of graded out a road that was good enough for wagons to go over and then he charged people a toll to use it and then there's a sign next to it for something called santa fe grand canyon needles national highway trail of the padres i don't actually know what that is and then there's a sign for the pacific crest trail system and then over the top there is route 66. anyway besides this signboard and this camp cajon monument with the flag a flying proudly at the top there's also another monument over here santa fe and salt lake trail 1849 gosh it's hard to read because of the light erected in honor of the brave pioneers of california in 1917 by pioneers sheldon stoddard sydney Waite, john brown george miller george cooley silas cox richard weir and jasper corbett okay so basically it's just a monument uh marking the fact that the old spanish trail and the mormon trail passed through Gosh, I don't know, probably right where this friggin' interstate is right now. And then this is kind of ironic. There's signs all over the place. You're saying no camping or overnight parking right underneath the sign that says free campground. How about that? But it's not just cars and trucks going over the Cajon Pass these days. There's also a bunch of hikers that come through here. Now you might think, well, this is a weird place to go hiking. I mean, you can hear how noisy it is and how much smog is in the air. Oh my God, why would anybody in their right mind ever want to hike here? Well, like it said on top of that sign back there, the Pacific Crest Trail actually passes right through here. Okay, the Pacific Crest Trail, that long trail that goes all the way from the Mexican border to the Canadian border, Reese Witherspoon made a movie where she played the gal that hiked all the way, did the whole thing. Like, a, lot of, a lot of people do that trail. I've considered doing it myself, but I don't know if I have the cojones. Anyway, the Cajon Pass is 
on the Pacific Crest Trail, or I guess the Pacific Crest Trail crosses the Cajon Pass. After you leave Mexico, gosh, I think, I think you're, it's about 300 miles north of the Mexican border and you come to this highway and I don't know how you cross the highway. I think the trail is actually right back here though. Let's see if I can find the trailhead. Wow, this is, oh yeah, look, right here. You can see the trail sign right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is so cool. It says right here, Pacific Crest Trail, 13.6 miles to Lake Silverwood, 29 miles to Highway 173. Gosh, imagine that. I mean, 13.6 miles, that's like a day's hike for most PCT hikers, or maybe even half a day for some. There's, there's those crazy guys, that the ultralight hikers that do like 30 miles a day. I think most people do about 16 miles a day. So you could have camped at Lake Silverwood last night and then trekked on over here and camped up here the next night uh or maybe not i don't know anyway uh let's go up the trail just a little bit because i see there's there's another kind of like little trail sign up there and like i said uh, i always kind of wanted to do the pacific crest trail so this will give me a tiny little taste of what it would be like hiking along every now and then you come to these signs look at this really cool wooden sign with a logo on it for the pacific crest trail national scenic trail you know, just so you knew you were on the right path, you didn't take a wrong turn. And you'd be hiking along one foot in front of the other, one mile after the other, all the way from Mexico to Canada. Or I guess you could do it vice versa, but I don't think anybody goes from Canada to Mexico. And I'm not really sure why that is, but anyway, here's like, it's like a little rest area for weary hikers. I mean, golly, imagine this for a minute. You just hiked all the way up from Mexico I can't remember how many miles. It's over 300 miles, I think. So it's been many, many days of solitude in the wilderness, sleeping at beautiful places like Lake Silverwood or whatever it was called. You know, and then all of a sudden you're, you know, you're hiking along with your pack, listening to the bees and the birds and the butterflies. And you start to hear this hum as you get closer and the hum gets louder and louder. And then you start to smell vehicle emissions. And next thing you know, you come over this little rise and bam you're confronted with this mess boy i'd want a place to stop and sit down for a minute too <laughs> okay let's look at this sign looks like it's just your standard trail sign but it does it shows the whole freaking route of the pacific crest trail i guess you'd have to hike all the way up 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 all the way through california that's a big state and then oregon and then washington on top of it can you imagine it makes me tired just thinking about it well Frankly, I think a lot of PCT hikers are pretty tired by the time they get here. And you know, having camped at the beautiful lake last night and well, then they get up here and they're faced with this mess. Rather than, well, you could keep hiking on, you know, until you get far enough away where you can't hear it or smell it anymore. Or you could just post up and find a campsite. I mean, there's probably plenty of places to camp right around here. Or I guess what a lot of Pacific Crest Trail hikers do is they take a break once they get here. I mean, you can't hike 20 miles a day every dang day i mean well yeah i guess i suppose you could and i know those ultra light guys do that but most pct hikers take a day off they call it a zero day because they do zero miles every now and then and i think the cajon pass is actually kind of a common place for hikers to do a zero day because well there are services here like you can see on this sign here there is this guffy campground 22 miles that away. So yeah, you could just push on another 22 miles and go to this campground. Or the sign also says McDonald's 0.4 miles that away. See that? There's a real live, honest to goodness, McDonald's restaurant right here on the Cajon Pass at the side of the Pacific Crest Trail. And not just a McDonald's, I think there's also a Subway and a Del Taco, and there's even a hotel up here called the Cajon Pass Inn, where a lot of Pacific Crest Trail hikers actually get a room for the night. Because again, think about it, you're like, whatever it is, 333 miles into your hike, you're tired, you're sweaty, you're dusty, you're dirty. You want nothing aside from a juicy McDonald's hamburger, more than a hot shower and a nice comfy bed. So a lot of PCT hikers get a room at this Cajon Pass Inn. And so I actually felt like if I wanted to do a thorough job for this video, I should stay there myself. So I did, and it's actually a 
pretty nice place. I think I paid, it was under a hundred dollars with taxes and everything, around 90 bucks, which I felt was reasonable. The room was clean. There was even a swimming pool. The only downside was I was laying in bed doing some email and I looked up and there was this huge black beetle crawling across the bed sheets. And to be fair, I don't know if that beetle crawled out from some crevice in the room or if it had stowed away in my bags from the place I stayed the night before, which is a very real possibility. Okay, how about that? That has to be one of the most scenically located McDonald's in the entire world. You can see the billboard over there up against those beautiful green rolling hills. Although maybe not so scenic on this side. Anyway, if it was me, I'd probably just keep walking until I got to the Del Taco because I personally think Del Taco's food is way better than the crap they serve at McDonald's. You know, at Del Taco, you can get burgers, but you can also get tacos, burritos, and delicious real ice cream shakes. I don't think the shakes at McDonald's are made with real ice cream, but... Oh, hold everything. Shamrock is back. Oh man, I don't know if you've ever had one of these shamrock shakes at McDonald's. It's like a St. Patrick's Day thing. And I should note, I'm here in April, but well, I guess maybe it's like a, an extended period they offer it for. And I, I don't know what shamrock flavor is. You tell me, I think it's mint or something, but man, they're like crack. And I feel like I have to go in and get one. Okay, never mind. You know, I was almost tempted. I was almost persuaded, but they didn't have the shamrock shake. They only had it as a McFlurry and man, it's a little too chilly to be eating ice cream. So then I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just get a hot cocoa. And I thought, do I really need to be eating any of this crap? No, I don't. I need to get on my way and finish editing this video. So nothing from McDonald's today, even though I had a gift card. Uh, let's go check out the next place that I think makes Cajon Pass super interesting. Okay, aside from Cajon Pass having hiking trails and highways, well, there's also a lot of train traffic that comes through here. And looks like I got here just in time. There's a big old railroad about to come around this corner. Boy, that guy better get out of the way. There's a lot of rail buffs out here. I'm not the only one. Sorry it's so noisy. Thanks a lot, Bezos. Ooh, and Walmart, my two bet noirs. All them intermodal containers just full of Amazon Prime goods and I don't know, flip-flops, Tic Tacs. Who knows what they're carrying? All the way from, well, this train's headed west, so it's coming from the desert. Maybe these are all empty. You know, this train's probably headed down to the port at Long Beach with all these empty containers. Send them back over to China and pick up more crap. You know what I mean? Like, we as a nation have really gotten ourselves into a pickle. We depend on cheap Chinese crap for everything. Oh, there it goes. Finally, the end of the line. Off you go along this beautiful route. I mean, let's just take a minute to appreciate how gorgeous the landscape is that this train just came through. I mean, there's the Mormon rocks in the foreground, and the hills in the background, and the snow-capped mountains. Those are the uh, San Gabriels. This is a beautiful pass for a railroad to go through, but it's also a really dangerous pass. Uh, it's a really steep grade for railroads. I guess like a, up to a 3% grade, which doesn't sound like that much. I mean, when you're driving on I-15 coming over Cajon Pass, that's like a 6% grade, but apparently for a railroad, 3% is very challenging. And a lot of trains come over these mountains. I think I read that somewhere between 75 and 100 freight and passenger trains cross the Cajon Pass every day. That's a lot of cheap Chinese crap. But it's also an excellent opportunity for rail buffs like that guy. And matter of fact, there's so many trail buffs up here. This is such a good place to watch railroads that there's even an entire park dedicated to it. 
Okay, yikes. I just drove up one of the steepest roads I've ever driven up in my life. It was pretty gnarly, but I made it to the top of this hill because I wanted to show you guys one final interesting thing in the area of Cajon Pass. Now I'm not at Cajon Junction anymore, which is where I was for everything else in this video. You know, right at the top where the gas station and the hotel and everything is. This is just a little bit farther northeast. And you can see we're sort of in the middle of these beautiful mountains, which I guess it's sort of like between the San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains. That's what the pass goes through. You can see there's the railroad tracks. And above the tracks, you can see there's Interstate 15 blazing merrily on its way to Barstow and beyond. And you might be able to see I'm headed towards this little grove of trees, which happens to be a little tiny hilltop park with the unglamorous name of Hill 582. That's right. Hill 582, not to be confused with Hill 581 or Hill 583. No, I guess this is some kind of rail buff viewing park. Cause like I said, up here in Cajon Pass is like the ideal place for train spotting. Anyway, I'm about to go poke around this little Hill 582. And if you wanna find out what secrets this park holds, well, you're gonna to have to tune in next time because this video has been long enough. I've already showed you so many interesting things in this unexpectedly fascinating and gorgeous part of the country. I mean, yeah, I happen to be here in the spring right after one of the wettest winters in recent memory. So everything is particularly green and Oh my God, I feel like I'm in the sound of music or something, but green or not, I just thought the Cajon Pass turned out to be much more scenic and way more interesting than I thought it would be. And I hope you felt the same way. And next time you're blazing along Interstate 15, heading to Vegas to pull the handle on that, what do they call it, one-eyed bandit? Or headed to LA to try and get discovered in the land of swimming pools and movie stars? Well. Maybe you'll take the time to get off at Cajon Junction and check out some of the historical monuments or maybe get a delicious Shamrock McFlurry at McDonald's.